For those of you who don't know, Terry Dempsey is a massively successful angler. He's been on the scene absolutely donkey's years. He's caught loads of big fish, so we've come to catch up with him today, find out a little bit about what he does and how he goes about it. First of all, Tell, what does your fishing consist of these days and what, what, what do you prefer to do? Uh, well, I, I try and go fishing as much, obviously, as, as, as often as I can, which at the minute is sort of pretty much about one night a week. I've got a family, young family, and my wife and that, so I can't stay away for too long. So when I do go fishing, I want to go somewhere where I've got half an idea of what I'm doing. So then I'll just I'll ch choose one water at a time. I'll fish one lake at a time, pretty much. You know, I might I might go on to another water for a little while, but I, I normally concentrate on one lake, and then I'll try to get a few areas going and stuff like that. So the first thing I'll do when I get to a lake is I'll look for a fish. I'll find a fish, and for me, the most important thing of all carp fishing is visual stuff. You know, by walking around the lake, looking for the fish, looking in different areas, looking at spots, is the water clear, is the water, you know, what are the cloudier bits and stuff like that. And I'll weigh all this up and I'll look at snags, islands, everything and weed. And, and that is really, my eyes is my carp fishing. You know, my eyes are my carp fishing and they will par pave the way for me to, to fish you know, to be able to get to get amongst the carp. As soon as I've found that out, then I'll use my bait, which is one, one of my favourite, you know, tools, using boilies. I use particles as well, you know, and, but I'll use bait then to start introducing bait, start getting the fish feeding on the bait, coming back regular. And I think to myself, if I can get them feeding on the bait and they're enjoying that bait, then they're going to start looking for it. Once they start looking for your bait and that's what they want and they know, then all you've got to do then is find a decent spot where you can present a rig for them, you know. Um, over the years, I've used many different rigs, but pretty much it ain't changed. Um, I use pretty much like a no-knot rig. Um, I've used that for getting on. I mean, we used to whip our lot, we used to whip Dacron onto um, spade end hooks. I caught my first 30 pound carp on a spade end hook. You know, I caught loads of 20s on spade end hooks and it was a dumb thing in them days. And we used to whip a, a bit of Dacron on a spade end and we used to just have the hair coming off, which is just like a no knot is now. You've got that kick and everything. And that rig pretty much has seen me through for the last 30 years of carp fishing. I tweak it around a little bit, but it's just, it's caught me, I don't know how many carp but a lot of carp. And I'll use a little bit of putty on it for my pop-up, but I just keep it pretty much simple. The last few years I've been using a lot of coated braids. I've been using the crushed on coated, coated braids, and um, I'll, take, I'll peel a bit off, I'll tie it out, and I'll use the supple bit as the hair. You know, I am a, also a fan of using nylon, although I'm a bit worried. A lot of the lakes I fish are very, very uh, hostile you know, to line and stuff like that, a lot of gravel bars, a lot of snags, a lot of weed. So a, a nylon hook length pretty much is out of the question unless you're using it absolutely too thick. But at the minute I've been using like this 30 pound jackal Christon hook length. And tough coated braids. Tough coated really braids. They come into it, their own, don't they, in yeah. those sort of situations. And also it's a nice soft, soft material as well. So it ain't gonna rip the fish to bits. It ain't like it's a sort of razor wire, sort of some of the stuff that I've seen, some of the braids. It's really soft stuff. It ties up really nice. If you put a bit of steam on it, you can steam it and get it sitting nice. Use a bit of heavy metal. That's what I've been using. This year, I've been using my Nutcracker Boilie on here, on this particular lake. You know, I've had a good good run of fish on here using the Nutcracker Boilie. I've been putting plenty of it out, and I've been using little corkboard pop-ups that I've been meshing and tying on, and um, I've been using a little bit of heavy metal, a bit crushed on it, heavy metal, and I'm just sinking them down. I've been using, we're not allowed to use leaders, so I can't use lead core or anything like that. All I'm using is straightforward run clip, um, losing the lead, I'm wanting to lose the lead because of the weed and stuff in here and the snags, losing the lead and just using a length of tubing and that is it, keeping it simple like that, letting the bait do the work. So with the putty then, do you, you know, with pop-ups, do you have them so they balance, quickly balance? Do you or? know, I used to balance them up so much that the bait would probably sit there for about two hours and just dance <laughs> around the lead like, you know, but nowadays I, I don't mind the bait sinking quite fast. I think maybe it just reacts a bit better. Use the weight as well, the putty. That, you know, the, the force between the putty and the pop-up, you know, that makes it even greater, doesn't it? So I think that can help Centrates for hooking. The and Definitely it. does, yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think if you've got a good strong hook link, you've got that kick in the hook, a good sharp hook, use the bait, you're on a winner. 
So that's the, I think that's the key is, you know, a lot of people these days are coming into the sport, reading all these magazines and DVDs with all these Fandango rigs and it's sort of, that's how it's sold to you these days, isn't it? You know, that it's it's not so much about location and bait, it's more about, you know, this rig, but that's that's just one part of the Far from jigsaw, it, isn't, isn't it? it? And it seems Far like, from, it. from you know, what I can make out mm. from your angling is, that's the smallest part. Yeah. You don't even worry about yeah, that. Yeah. You know, keep it simple. Keep it simple. And, Get uh, in amongst them. Find where they want to feed. Find where they want to feed, where they want to eat. And if they want to eat it, they will eat it. And you're welcome. Use a nice short glint. You've got to use strong gear. You know, you've got to use strong tackle for big carp. And, and that is what I try to do. You know, I'm, I, I know that some of these rigs out there that are being tied up, that are really complicated, I know they catch a lot of fish. They obviously do. You know, even the chod rigs, we know how many like really good anglers who have used chod rigs and caught untold amounts of fish. I'm, I just find that what I do just suits what I do. I have caught fish on uh, chods, I have caught a couple of fish on them and I've, I have varied, but I always seem to come back to that same old rig, that same old link on them little spots what I've done for years and years and years and just, I don't know, maybe I'm setting my ways but I'm still getting bites on them today.